It can be a frightening and frustrating condition for those who have it. Epilepsy affects more than 3 million people in the U.S., but there is hope. Dr. Modur, medical director of the epilepsy program at Seton Brain and Spine Institute, is here to talk about new and exciting treatment options. Good morning to you. Good morning. Well, many of us have either heard of epilepsy or know someone who has it, but start out with what is it exactly? Yeah, epilepsy is a chronic condition that makes a person have seizures. And seizures occur when a bunch of brain cells misfire. In other words, they fire when they're not supposed to. And that causes abnormal electrical activity in the brain. And that in turn leads to a person uh, passing out, blacking out, having abnormal movements, acting confused, and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. Are people born with it? Can it show up later on at any age? What, what brings it on? Yeah, so uh, the epilepsy can be inherited, so it can be a genetic abnormality. In many cases, we find an abnormality in the brain itself that makes these cells misfire. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, somebody could develop epilepsy after a stroke, a head injury, or they could be born with some abnormality right at the time of birth, uh, and scar tissue, brain tumors, and so on and so forth. But it's important to remember that in many patients, we may not find a cause even after extensive workup, mm -hmm. uh, but they still have epilepsy and seizures. Is there a way to know if you are at risk of it at any point? Yeah, so epilepsy can uh, develop in anyone at any age. Uh, it, it, it's often seen most often in uh, um, very young and the very old. Mm -hmm. uh, so the presence of some risk factors like having had a stroke before or a uh, birth defect will increase the risk of developing epilepsy later on. Got it. How do you diagnose it? Yeah, typically we do a scan of the brain like an MRI scan or a CAT scan and we are looking for an abnormality that may cause the, uh, the seizures to happen. Mm -hmm. And we also record the brain waves uh, by what's called EEG or electroencephalogram. It is a recording of the brain waves that tells us what part of the brain may be responsible for causing the seizures. Mm -hmm. And in many cases, uh, if those two are not helpful and the patients continue to have seizures, then we do a continuous recording of their brain waves uh, and also their behavior by video uh, while they're in the hospital. Uh, so for a day or a several days. So that's called video EEG monitoring, and in many cases that gives us a very definitive diagnosis of what is going on. Mm -hmm. We've only got about 20 seconds left, but there's treatment out there. But let's talk about the new treatment yeah. for it. So the new treatment is uh, uh, epilepsy surgery, a way of doing it rather non-invasively. So then uh, one new development in that area is laser ablation of the seizure focus. Instead of opening the brain and exposing it, you put a laser probe and burn the tissue off. The other new thing is a device that was released recently and where you put a couple of probes in the brain that uh, detect the seizures and stop them by delivering an electrical current. So that's called a responsive neurostimulator. This is something similar to having a defibrillator in the heart that stops abnormal heart rhythms. So those are the two new things that have come on the market very recently. Very interesting, Dr. Mordura. Thank you so much for being here this morning. We're going to have all of this information on our website a little bit later this morning at kxan.com.